Allison Pryor and I teach acrylic paintings and if you're new to my channel then you can learn to paint beautiful paintings like this one. We're going to do this one today. It's a beautiful colorful painting, two little fishies. So let's get started. So get your paints ready, get organized and just put your primary colors on red, yellow and blue and if you got any burnt umber or black or brown so to start this painting, we're going to do the background first. So get all the ocean underneath done first. And uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to start off with some blue. Just use a flat synthetic brush and ultramarine blue. And we're going to put these little bits of blue and we're going to leave a lot of open spaces, all right? Just leave a lot of open spaces. And that'll give the illusion of under the water. So we want that blue to be nice and blue. A lot of darkness going on up here. You can even make some crisscross strokes if that'll help. Little crisscross strokes just to make sure that you leave open spaces. Okay. Seems to be a little there we go. So I'm going to do the whole background like that. Pick up some more blue. So make sure you keep picking up blue as soon as you run. I'm not pushing very hard and I'm not making long strokes, little short strokes, so I can make sure that I miss those white areas. All right. So that's important to keep those white areas. Now, if you end up going over them too much, you let it dry and then you can add some white on top. This is going to be, it's going to give it a more of a, an underwater look. All right, so some are darker than other areas, right? Kind of haphazardly putting in, and I'm using the chisel edge of my brush so that I'm not pushing too, too hard and getting too much coverage. Now, I have some white paint on my canvas that didn't dry yet but you can do this on a dry canvas if you do it on a white canvas then the white's going to mix in with your blue which kind of gives you a nice different values of blue but you can do it either way all right what we're going to do when we finish this we're going to let that dry all right then we can start working with it again because if we leave it wet it's going to be harder to uh, work with it because it will all spread into each other. We don't want that. So sorry. That'd make a nice background for anything, wouldn't it? <laughs> now let's try making a glaze to put over that so we can make it look like it's underwater. So we'll just take a flat brush. You can take the same one you used. If that worked good for your background, that'll work good for even if it's dirty, you can add it. Now that might be too much water. So you don't need a big lot of water. Just start off with a small bit of water first, okay? And then you can add your blue to it. I'm going to add more dark blue. Nice and watery. So the reason we're making a glaze is because we don't want to cover up what we already did. We want to be able to still see it, okay? But yet we want it to make it look like it's underwater. So Start putting that over there. Now see how you can see, still see through that? Isn't that nice? Look at that. See how nice that is? We can do a couple of layers of, of uh, glaze. Let's just get this much done first. Yeah, you should, uh, it's interesting to learn how to glaze because you can put glazes over any painting and it can it can enhance the colors. It can change it up a little bit. Great for uh, when you're doing underwater. Nice. So I'm going to add a bit of white to that because I want to lighten it up a little bit for down the bottom. Okay. And if it gets too thick, if you can't see through it, then add more water. 
You'll see how to get white away, the complete white. You know what I mean? Like you don't want it too white. It's got to be like summer water, so it has to be kind of bluish color. There we go. Look at that. It's pretty nice, isn't it? Good. I want to add more water and a little bit more white because I'm trying to get it a bit brighter down at the bottom there. If you get too much color, then do a new batch so that it's more watery and lighter, okay? If you're having real problems getting it to lighten up, just do a new batch. Starting with some water, a little bit of paint. You can always add more paint if you need it, so you're better off putting a little bit in at a time. Just see if that's the right color. So there we go. It's got kind of a nice underwater look. And what I want to, I want to darken this up up here a bit more. So I'm going to add um, blue. really want to darken it, but I don't want to cover up what I have up there, but I do want to darken it up a bit more up there on top. That'll give it depth, see? There we go. So you can still see through it. Now over here is going to be some rocks and things, so... Might add a bit more. It's hard to know when to stop, isn't it? <laughs> we'll keep trying. Let's see what I want to do. Don't want it to be too thick, and I want to cover up what I did. It's got a little bit of a darkness up there. I'm not going to worry about it right now too much. What I'm going to do is take some blue paint on my very wet brush, and I just took it right off the canvas here. All right, and I'm just going to add a few more little dark spots here, the same way we did it in the beginning. Okay, everything's still wet, you know. You can wait for it to dry if you want. So I'm just, all right, so I'm just taking these little. Pretend you're making the letter U, if, if that helps. A little bit more darkness in here. And then you got a few more. Use the corner of your brush and make like a, a little scoop. Up in the corner is a bit dark up here. I'm popping over the white parts here. I don't want to lose that either. I'm bringing that together a little bit. There we go. Where the light is shining on it, you might not see how dark it is, but use the ultramarine blue in its raw form. You know, don't mix anything with it and just use it. Darken up those spots, but still, like we did in the beginning, separate, you know, separate the colors so that you get to keep some of the lighter colors. Good. Can add a few more down here, just really spread them out. Now the fish are going here, so you don't have to worry too much, but we gonna just get a few little things going on there. There we go. It's kind of adding a little more color to the, some shadows. These are basically shadows. All right. That's good. Nice background. Good. 
so I had a nice close up of my fish and uh, I'll send you the, the pattern you can copy you can just put it on there and that's eight and a half by eleven so if your canvas is bigger and you can print it off bigger it depends how big you want your fish you can make them smaller if you like you know so it's up to you so I'm making them big so you can see them and then I'm going to tape it on and everything is dry underneath it has to be perfectly dry you can use chalk to draw them out um, without using a pattern you can just draw them out it's only a circle basically in shape and nose if, if you want to do that I'm just going to show you different ways so you can draw it out and then or you can use carbon paper to put underneath there and then you can trace it out and that way you'll get a perfect shape without having to erase it and readjust it and all that good stuff so I'm just going to use carbon paper and I'm going to use a pen to push down on the pen so I can get the, that to transfer to my canvas so you can certainly do it freehand if you feel that you you know you want to do it that way so what I did was I put the carbon paper underneath and I started drawing it out with my pen um, you could easily eyeball it and lift it up and say okay well that line is right here and use chalk so I just did it with a pen and I lifted up and I, I got it to come out um, if you do it and you find that your line is too light you can barely see it then go lift up your paper and draw over that faint line again with your pen and that will bring it out more okay because it, it, sometimes paint takes even though it seems really dry it uh, kind of has that little bit of a dampness to it that you don't even notice so you can take that off and we'll start painting the fish you can take a small flat brush whatever works for you you can take a filbert whatever you know this is synthetic and and it's uh, not a bristle so and we can start with the orange, we can start with the yellow fish. So, um, I don't know. Let's start with the uh, yellow fish. So I'm going to add some white to my yellow to make it more opaque. Because we got a blue underpainting, right? So, like I said, you can start with the fish first and then do your underpainting. But it's really hard to work around it. There's also different ways you can do it. You could use, you could draw out your fish on your canvas and you can use um, masking tape or anything to cover it up so you can paint around it without disturbing that so you can also use um, other things I'll get the name of that other thing I'm talking about now so I'm painting it a really light yellow because I can always go back over it with yellow again but I want to make sure that the blue don't come through I want it to be nice bright yellow so I'm gonna put the white on with the yellow to make it more opaque okay see how more opaque it is you can't see the yellow as much uh, the blue as much and what I was talking about was the masking fluid and if you had to draw on your fish first you put this masking fluid on it and then you could paint over the fish and then when it's done you just take the masking fluid off and then your fish are there uh, with you know with the canvas showing through instead of the blue background but uh, I don't mind doing it this way it's faster <laughs> you know because by it's that masking fluid is a little sticky and a bit hard to get off so you really have to push it so just going to get the yellow one first and we'll worry about adding more yellows and whatever other colors and the stripes I, I didn't bother with the um, the gills I'll do that last I want to get this done first so you know you, to make things easy do your basics your underpaintings first Just do an underpainting of the main color first. So the main color, this is yellow, right? So just get in as much yellow as you can. And then you can add your, you can see on the fish that some orangey color going on in this yellow also. All right, see how I'm just adding some more yellow? But I'm going to keep going with white added to it. See? So 
do the whole fish except the face yellow yellow and white yellow with white added to it attitude <laughs> add to it all right all right and then we're gonna finish this good So I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that yellow to green it up a little bit because I have a bit of a green trim here. So now I'm going to do the facial. So I have black on my palette and I'm going to put some white with it, make a bit of a gray. And then I'm going to put that bit of gray. Just using a smaller flat brush because this is a smaller area. Just going to put a bit of gray in here. Okay, that's gray. That down there is orange by the mouth. Could or, or yellow or it's orangey color. So I'm just gonna do that now after I get the gray done. You could have did that first if you wanted to. It's the eye there. Just follow your lines. These are just your first coats, okay? So you don't want to um, think this is a finished product, finished painting, because you want to make sure that you know that this is. I'm going to take that blue, uh, gray, and I'm going to. Put a little blue in there. It seems to be a little bit of a bluish color in there too. So I'm going to add a bit of blue and white. Kind of make a medium blue color. Just because the background is blue, I don't want to lose it in the background. So I'm just going to add a little bit of blue to that there just to brighten it up a small bit. I'll come back to that after. I'm not worried about that right now too much. Just a little bit. Then I'm going to add my black eye. I'm just going to use a corner brush, but you're better off using a, a round brush. And then I'm going to clean my brush and finish off the front of that face there with some yellow and white like I did the body because we're going to be putting orange there also. But I don't want to do that yet. I just want to get a base color first. Need more white because as you can see the transparency is coming through there so I want to get it more opaque and by make you can make your paints opaque by adding more white except red. If red is transparent 
don't add white, it'll turn pink. Just add yellow, a bit of yellow, and that'll brighten up your red. A few little tips and tricks for you. All right, now, let's let that dry. Now the other fish is more on the reddish side, so I'm gonna pick up pure red. And add a small bit of yellow to it for opaque see. <laughs> opaque see. I'm trying to make up my own words now to make it more opaque and so might need a little more yellow. Alright. I'll show you how I'm mixing the colors. I don't want you to uh, have to be guessing. So I'm just adding more yellow to the red. See how it's not changing the color too much? Making it more of a brighter red just by adding some yellow. Add white to that be pure pink. We don't see how it looks, see the, the brightness, the difference. Right? So some people I wouldn't have known that only I had learned things over the years and trial and error. Now because the background is kind of a, a blue dark, I'm gonna need more yellow. Now we'll brighten that up again after. I just want to get a coat of paint on that. And as I go along, I'll probably add a little more bits of yellow to brighten it up a bit. I kind of like that color red though. I'm just going to add a bit of yellow there now. See? See how that brightened it up nice? I make it more opaque. Definitely don't want to add white. Go see, just pick up some yellow and that will mix in with what you already have on the canvas here. When that dries, we can do more coats. So, you might say, How many coats do you think you'll need? Well, um, depends on how bright you want your fish and how the colors you want and how, how it looks in general. Don't have exactly the same as the reference photo, you may need one or two coats. First coat dries first. The second coat will go on better than trying to keep mixing in colors on top of colors while they're wet because then they'll just mix in with each other. But if the bottom one dries and you add a top coat, then that will give it a more opaque, brighter, vibrant colors. Yeah. So we'll be working wet on dry, okay? You hear the word wet on wet, you hear the words wet on dry, dry on wet. No, <laughs> that don't make sense. Okay, so it's wet on dry. I'm still adding some yellow to my red, as you can see here. It's back here is a bit lighter, but I'm not too worried about that yet. Like I said, I'm trying to get an underpainting that's that the blue is not coming through. Now, another way you could do it is you could paint your fish white. Let it dry and then put on your reds and yellows and different things like that, right? You do that too. So anything with dark background that you're trying to paint, you can paint it white first. Paint the shape white first, let it dry and then start put adding your colors. You might say, well, why didn't you do that? I never thought about it <laughs> till now. <laughs> you know? But I will do it sometime to show you. Well, I, you know what I could do? I could do the tail, the fish tail, white, and then put on the colors and show you how different it is. All right, so I'll clean up my brush. And I'll paint the fish tail white. Bit of color got mixed in with it, so that's going to make it more transparent. So we got to get that white on there. There we go. OK, 
Okay, now when that dries, see I'll be able to add the red color and that I'll show you then the difference. It'll be a big difference. So while we're waiting for that to dry, we can do the, the, the face, which is kind of a purplish, bluish, or blue, ultramarine blue. We can use the ultramarine blue, because it's darker than the background, which is good. Right here. And then we can add more there. I'll come back to that. And then we can add the eye, which I'm putting in a black eye. It can be dark brown. All right. And then we will add a bit of bread to the part of the fish that's coming out there. There we go. Okay, now they're starting to come to life. So we'll add these dark coral reefs. I'll just put them on there like that. Just add green and uh, any dark green if you have sap green. If you don't, add yellow and ultramarine blue together. Use the chisel edge of your brush to bring in these squiggly lines. And you can even add a bit of black if you want to really get some darks in the back here. Right, see that? So down here can be really dark. And you can come down here. And when you come in, just make them kind of squiggly. Squiggle out, squiggle up, squiggle around. Because they are kind of floating underwater, right? Use your chiseled edge, and if that don't work for you, just get a small round brush. I'll probably get a small round brush to lighten them up, get some shape, okay? But get your basics done this way. It'll be easier once you get a little bit of a basic shape the way you want them, then you can always go back in and with a round brush, which we're going to do, and then we're going to Okay, so just squiggly lines. Good. Well, that's good. And then we'll get a round brush. Small round. Small round brush like this. Pretty, pretty round, small. I'm going to get a lighter green, so just add more yellow to your green. totally mixed but just enough to go back over some of these. If it's not light enough add more yellow. Make some of these squiggly lines. You don't have to be perfectly on top of what you did. Just sort of squiggle some lines on top of those greens so you can see them better. And don't make a straight line, like you can make a line and then move away from it and make another line, okay? There we go. If you're having problems getting it lighter, just add a bit of white to your green and yellow. So I'm getting better there now. And I'm kind of squiggling it, squiggly lines over what I did. Leave me some shadows. I'll move out to the edge here. There we go. I'm going to need some more color. White, yellow, and green.
So when you're happy with that, then you can start adding a little bit of more highlight. This is fun. Fun to do. Is that too bright? Might be too bright, is it? I'll just add a bit more green. Tone it down a bit. There we go. Just squiggling over the lines. Squiggle, squiggle. Squiggle, squiggle right on the top of what you did so that you don't lose your dark. Good. Add a little more white and yellow if you can't get it to show up. Even if you have to go over it a few times. Okay, so make sure to squiggle because they're moving around underwater. It gives it movement, see? Right? Like when you're doing waves, you need you need to make your waves wavy. So you squiggle your lines. Squiggle, squiggle. And what you can do here, I think that's good to you. More bright ones, maybe some little extra bright ones coming out here. You know, just to say the light is shining on it or something like that. Squiggle, squiggle. That's nice. And now you can take the back of your brush if you want, or you can use a toothpick. Add some little white highlights on the edges. Okay. If that's too big, just use a toothpick. into white just tap on some of these white edges they get smaller as you, you run out of paint which is kind of cool and we will as you can see I'm not following the uh, reference photo perfectly I want to do my own thing. I want to have the freedom not to worry about it. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to do my own thing. Even though I'm using the reference photo, but I don't want to go, oh, that dot is not right there. Oh, I put the wrong dot in the wrong place. I don't want to do that. I just want to play and have fun. That's all. It's cute, isn't it? Nice. And while you're on a roll, you can do some down here. Same thing, dark green, add a little bit of black if you have to. Make it green, add some black or some kind of darkness just to be able to get some of these. And I'm using chisel edge, my flat brush. I'm squiggling some lines up. Just bring them out. Gotta get some more green, that kind of looks. Mix up some greens. Make sure your green's nice and dark first because we do the highlights and that, that brings the highlights out, see? Squiggly lines, squiggle, squiggle, bump, bump, bump. Yeah, get some in first, you can always fill in spaces after. Okay, there it is. other things going on over here but you can put in whatever you want all right you can look at some pictures of a coral reef and then you can add you can even add some little tiny fish floating around too you know all right I'm just getting some of this squiggly stuff in here there we go and put in as much of this as you want enough isn't it it's good for there and we'll add our highlights on top of that like we did before your yellows and whites and green make sure you squiggle the line now we'll use the, uh, the round brush get your lighter color green and Squiggle some lines over that. Some 
you can go over what you already did but still don't lose uh, the underpainting the darker green just go on top so that so you still keep some of the dark see Tell you another brush that work really good like this. Because that's getting kind of thick there, you notice? So you can use a long liner brush. The longer your liner brush, the better, the thinner your lines will be. Right? A nice little pointy top on that one, see? And then you just roll in your paint. And then you will get thinner lines. See? Again, so that you can see him. See, the lines are much thinner now. And you can layer as many. Um, light colors as you want. Like I said, try not to lose, if you do lose dark, just put them back in. Just go in with dark green and go around what you did. Go back and forth, see? You see how I'm leaving the darks, right? Now we can add our little white tips. We can use a toothbrush, a <laughs> toothbrush. You can use a toothpick. You can use the tip of your, if you have a brush that's nice and tiny, right? Just tap on some whites like that. Uh -huh. Wherever you want them. Yeah, nice. Those little white tips really bring them out nicely, don't they? And we may have to go back over some of that again to brighten them up. So now what we're going to do is we can add more coral. And we can go back and then we can finish the fish. So you just get a shape for the coral. Just get a flat brush. And get uh, a, a really dark. I'm going to add black and blue and green together. And I'm going to add some kind of rock formation here. I'm kind of scrubbing it on so I can get it a little bit so it won't be just. Let's see, I'm just trying to think. Just want to get something on here so we can have a shape. a little bit. Down around the coral. Then I'm going to add some color. Some red. Just tap it on. I'm just tap, tap, tapping it on a little bit. Okay. Like I said, I, I'm not much for trying to be perfect with the reference photo, just looking at it and saying, okay, well, maybe this will look nicer, uh, maybe even nicer, you know. So I'm just adding some red and a bit of white this time to give it a bit of a pinkish color in between. Pinkish purple. Just add some colors on top of each other. 
kind of like that red color though. And some my dirty brush. I'm going to get a bit of a shape up here. That's all I need there. I'll come back to that and see if I want to do something else after. Just tapping on the dirty brush. Different. Kind of nice. There we go. And get some shape. We'll use the black, blue, and greenish color to get some shape over here. just to see what we want to do with it. Do it. Paint that in with some red and blue, give it kind of a reddish. Get some more red. I like the red, you know, it's kind of nice. I'm not even blending it, I'm just kind of throwing it in there with the dark color I just put on there so that it kind of jumps out at you. Isn't that nice? See, I'm not even mixing it in or anything. I'm just sort of hoping for the best. Isn't that nice? It's not bad, is it? I'm going to add a bit of blue to my red there and get a... Let's see what happens here. Just see what happens. I'm kind of playing around with color, actually. I'm going to add a bit of blue and nice some dark back here. That's pretty. I'm going to add a bit of white. Just playing around with color. As long as your brush is dirty, all these colors will mix in and they'll they'll make their own shapes. Purple and reds. There we go. See, just mix in the colors. Don't even worry about it. Throw in a bit of white here. See that? See how that just jumped out there? Isn't that nice? More white. My brush is dirty. That's why I'm getting these really nice colors. Try not to mix them too much. Colors all bouncing around together, having a grand old time. Gotta bring some of that leftover paint over here. Just tapping at it a little bit, tap, 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 tap. That'll give you some texture. Texture and shape. Nice. You can even add some greens. Greens, nice. Look at that. Nice. And then some white. Just play around with some white up here just to see what comes out. Everything is wet. Okay, now like I said, you can look at some coral reefs and, and these are just rocks and different things going on there. So we don't need to uh, worry too much about making certain shapes. Just make some kind of a shape and then you can just add color. Right. Dropping off some color. I have my I just went back and got a bit of white. See, white brings out everything, right? As long as your brush is nice and dirty. 
All right, as you can see, it doesn't look anything like the reference photo, but the reference photo helped me decide on different shapes that I wanted to use. Looks nice. I'm using a stretch canvas like me. You can go around the edges and just bring around some color just to make it look like it's all in one. So you just tap on some of the reddish, darkish, reddish color there. Yeah, and that's what you do on that side. Okay, now. Let's work on those fish and then whatever else you want to do with it. I'm going to work on the small flat brush, clean brush, because I'm after making a real mess there. So you're going to get a clean flat brush or clean one you have and then use that. And we'll start on the red fish so we can make that more orange. So I just picked up a little filbert brush. You can use a flat, synthetic. And we're going to add red. I'm going to add some yellow. Let's just add some red. Now, sometimes to save money and to save the environment, I reuse these over and over. I use the front and I use the back. Right, use the front, use the back. Sometimes I'll paint the other side white so I can reuse them. So, because I don't like using styrofoam, but I just happen to have them here. So, so I'll reuse them, reuse them, so they won't. Uh, so, when I throw them all in the garbage all the time. some more yellow because you really want to get that but we don't want pure yellow because that that one down there is yellow I'm trying to get a nice orangey color any bit of white helps So you're starting off with red and yellow, right? And white is your savior. <laughs> it saves you. It'll save you. Save you time and heartache. See how that's kind of yellow even though I added red to it, right? See how that's kind of red even though I yellow to it? Now when we add white, I know I said don't add white to red, but we're gonna add if you got more yellow than red, then you can add white, okay? To get a brighter orange. Alright, do that. Now I get some white over here. So you can find if, if you gotta add more uh, color, make sure you don't mix the white in with the other colors there, so find a spot. Depending on what you're using for a palette, okay? You may not have to worry about it. But now, while this is wet, it has to be wet, okay? See how bright that is now? Isn't that nice? Just by adding white, see? And because the paint is wet, it mixes in with it and it and it, uh, it's easier to work with. nice isn't it and then we'll go back further and we want it a bit brighter again so we'll add more yellow and a bit of white okay brighter there. Now I'm going to add some white and yellow. Try and brighten it up a bit more. Because that's wet, I can get that to 
blend in with my other color. Chisel edge. Use a chisel edge. Add some red and yellow. Almost went into the other fish, didn't I? I'll fix that now when I go back. Okay. Coming along nicely. Good. Some more yellow. Now if you run into a situation where you can't get it as bright as you want, just add white to your dirty brush and to your wet paint. Make sure everything's wet. Once it dries, then you can't do this. You'll have to re-wet everything again. You'll have to, you know, keep using. This is why I keep going over certain places to keep it wet, see? Right? I want to keep it wet. Because if that dries on me, then I've got to add more paint. Which is nothing wrong with that, but... I don't want to lose my colors. I had a little bit of white. Sometimes you have to experiment too to see what's going to happen. There we go. More white. I can get away with white because everything's still wet. See, it'll blend. More white on the tail, the dirty brush. Good. Good. If you're mixing it in, you can move your brush around on your palette and you'll see the colors coming off. You'll be able to use that. Get something in the tail here. Good. So I'm just going to leave that for now and then when I get some of the yellow fish done. So the yellow fish we are going to go back over with some yellow and white. All right, and get that on there. You can see there's a bit of red mixed in. It's fine because that's the way it is, you know, on the reference photo. There's some orangey color there mixing in. But I want to Get it more opaque and more yellowy. Nice, look at that. Good. Yellow and white, and I touched a little tiny bit of red there. There it is. Good, good. Nice. Nice. I'm going to touch a little tiny bit of red in my yellow to get it up here. As you can see, there's a bit of, that's too white, isn't it? Uh, too yellow, isn't it? So I'm going to add some white, brighten it up a bit. There we go, that's better. So all you're doing is working with three colors. That way you won't get mixed in with blues and greens. All right, it's a little bit orangey down here. Okay, so you get a little bit of orangey down here. Just picking up 
just playing around my colors, just picking up some colors. That's too red, and I can always go back and add white or yellow. But because everything is wet, wet I can play around with the colors. All right. Good, and over here. Good. Nice. Get some going on here. Yeah, there's a bit of green in the tail, that's why I didn't mind. I had a little tiny bit of green to the yellow. I still want my orangey color though, so I'm going to clean off my brush a bit so that I don't have too much of that green on there. And I'm going to go with the red and yellow and some white. There we go. I don't know if you can hear the dog barking and somebody outside, not me. <laughs> this going on here. There we go, and a bit of orangey color here. Just green there, but I kind of like the orangey color. Nice. Good. You need a little bit of brightness up here with a bit of orange, yellow, and a bit of red together. Not too much. More yellow. I should have a smaller brush. But I like to be adventurous. <laughs> Put a tiny bit of white to that. Nice. All right, let's see what else we got to do. So take a flat brush and we'll try to add those gills, I guess, sister gills there, and because I think this might work better. So what we're going to do is take a dark orangey color. So we'll take a darker orangey color on the chiseled edge. And it'll be more red than yellow. See how that works out. Right on chiseled edge. And chiseled edge. Some of them comes pretty straight like that. If your lines are too thick, we can try a round brush. I have tried different brushes to see what, what works best. Nice round brush might work better. So try different brushes. I'm going to try, try the chisel edge is pretty good, but I'm going to try, um, I want to add a little tiny bit of blue to my orange color because I couldn't see it that well. I'm going to try that again. That's better. That's better. There we go. Add a little bit of blue to your orange. That will tone it down to give you a better... So you can see it better. You can see the gills better. Yes, 
a bit too too dark. Just as you go along. And they get narrower and narrower as you come down here. Same with the other one. So you can see it kind of gets tinier and tinier as it comes back here, see? There we go. So you want to get that so you can see it. so that we can adjust them. Some yellow, red, and a little bit of blue. These here you just have to take your time. I'll make them a little bit wider so I can adjust them better. Come down further here. Some more red going on there. It looks like it's almost turning green. You could be careful with the colors. <laughs> To make your adjustments as you're going along, get them on first and then sit down, look at your reference photo and see how they, you know, if they're higher up, come down around this way a little more. They don't have to be, they don't have to be the exact amount that's on the reference photo, but if you want to make them the exact amount, you certainly can. So I got that much done. Now I'm up to adjust everything and then I think that's it. So I think I'll add a little more orangey red on that part here. Just use my round brush. There we go. There we go. Go. I'm going to add a bit more yellow on top of that. Maybe with a little bit of white to brighten up a small bit. Out here. You need, it's nice to, um, 
some more yellow here. It's nice to have different values of color. So you got the orangey color and the lighter color. You got two values there. Right, you got uh you need a bit more your value here. I'll add a bit of white to that. A bit of white. Bring it out more. See, just that little touch, you know what I mean? Like a brighter yellow in certain areas will, will really make it stand out more. See, I'm just kind of thinking where it will go nice. Don't see much in the reference photo there, but I'm just going to try and add a little more highlight up here and it's a very bright around that edge there yellow and white right here right here nice there we go very nice good Where else have we got some? Nice. We also had the same thing up here. These little touches really add to it, you know. Yeah, nice. A little bit around here. Let's go around the edge here a little bit, but um, probably leave a space there. Just sort of come in around that edge. There we go. It's nice. And we got some green on the end there. That's strange. Bit of blue and yellow if you want that. I got a bit of a greenish edge here. Alright, looking good. Whoopsie daisies. Whoopsie daisies. <laughs> and we got that nice green edge going on here, which is already there. That's fine. Add a little bit of green going on here it seems to be kind of nice so I'll add it you don't have to but it's in the reference photo but I'm just kind of just using some leftover paint which is a bit too much so I'll add some yellow to that because I messed it up a bit I'm trying to bring it in from that green there Something like what the reference photo is doing. Okay, so I'll clean that up now. Just watch. You might say, what is she doing? Well, just sort of um, experimenting at times, you know. See what it looked like. Get a bit, get a bit of that green there. And I kind of want a little more yellow here. Picking up some yellow. So because you're only using three colors, you can experiment all you want. You know, that's the beauty of these three colors. It's really nice, right? You can get a bit of white and yellow, and I'm going to sort of get around these edges here to clean them up a bit. Okay, you can use your chiseled edge or you Right, or you can use a round brush, whatever works for you. Just that way you can clean up these edges here. See? All right. Yellow and white. Then we'll clean up the edge here. It kind of brings them out a bit too, right? See that? Good.
see how that brings them out more. Maybe too much white and make sure I get enough yellow in that. Okay, good. Yeah, I really like the way that makes them stand out more. Oh boy. Pushed too hard that time. I'm gonna try my chisel. So make sure that uh, you're I'm gonna try a chisel edge brush now too. The round brush worked pretty good too. So I'm just gonna get my yellow. Look at the mess I got, isn't that great? So I'll clean up this edge here too. Yeah, chisel edge is really good. If you want more stripes, so you can certainly do that. Stripes, uh, more gills, more gills. There we go. Looks good. And the orangey one. We're going to lighten it up with some more orange, so red and yellow. Red and yellow. Clean up those edges there. See how nicely it cleans it up? And leaves it there. Nice. There we go. Good, 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 good. Here we go. Cleaning up. Bit more red, bit of yellow. Watch that red is really, really strong. So get as much yellow into your red as you can to get that nice orangey color. Okay. Good. Good, good. Good. A little more blue on here. I lightened up a small bit of white. Just to lighten it up a small bit, just so you can see it here. Good. So any little touch-ups that you want to do, do them at the end. And you don't have to do exactly the same as the reference photo because it, it can get frustrating if you can't get it exactly the same. You, you do, it still looks good. So I think that's about it for now. I don't think I can, you know, I don't want to do too much more. I don't think there's much more to do. You can certainly do as, you know, whatever you want. Add a few highlights here or play around with it. A little bit of white or something there just to give it some extra highlight. 
just look at the reference photo and see where the highlights are. They don't have to be exactly the same shapes or anything. But you can see that there's highlights there and here. See how you can pick out different things and use them to your advantage. That's all. See? Just by tap, tap, tapping, get a little some shapes and things going on there. See? I don't think I'm going to bother with too much more now because, like I said, you can you can take your time and do whatever you want, right? It's just leftover paint I'm just tapping on there. Just so you can make it look like it's little rocks or something going on there. Background looks good. I mean, you can certainly add more darks and things to it if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to add a little more dark here or something like that, just to, you know, so, because it's already done, so you don't really need to do much more, you just add your own little touches, see, right, just add a little bit of darks here and there, there we go, that's about it really, I mean there is, yes, you can always do tons more stuff, but I'm not going to bore you with constantly picking. Pick, pick, pick. There we go. That's pretty. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this painting and I hope you give it a try and we'll be doing lots more paintings coming up. And so I'll say goodbye from Alison Pryor and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.